In this section, we finally investigate the PID controller. Before the PID controller is tuned, optimized, you have to check if there are no problems associated to actuators, sensors, that the correct control structure has been chosen and that you have some process knowledge. Remember that it is impossible to compensate for a badly chosen control structure by just tuning. In this 15-hour course, we will only consider PID control associated to feed forward as a control structure. But of course, there are more complicated control structures. And if you're interested in the details, you can refer to the course Practical Process Control available online. Well, the PID controller is the most widespread controller that you'll find in well, process industry, right? You will say that, well, depending on the process, you'll find 95 to 99% PID controllers. There are many different implementations. In this course, we'll talk about the series and parallel implementations. The parallel implementation is the one that is used most often. There are many extensions of the PID controller available, but in this 15-hour course, we will only consider proportional action and derivative action on the control error. Remember that the control error is set point SP minus process value PV. But it is also possible to consider proportional and derivative action on PV only. If interested, again, refer to practical process control for more details. Well, the actual implementation will vary from vendor to vendor. So look at the documentation to see what type of implementation you've got and if you can use these extensions. In general, the reason why this PID controller is so widespread is that it is, of course, a all-round algorithm, right? There are some limitations in the case of complex systems and in the presence of dead time, dead time here large with respect to the main time constant. By complex systems, we mean systems with an inverse response. These are systems that we have considered in the previous section with a zero to the right of the imaginary axis. For these kind of systems, well, you'll have to choose another type of controller, and this will be the Smith predictor, the predictive PID controller, or an internal model controller. These controllers go beyond the scope of this 15 hour course. But again, if interested, consider looking at the course practical process control available online. Proportional control is implemented as follows, right? You can see that the output of the controller is proportional to the control error. Remember that the control error is the set point minus the process value that is controlled. So the higher the control error, well, the higher the output of the controller, the more aggressive the controller is. The proportionality factor, KC, is the so-called controller gain. You can see here that we have this proportionality between control error and manipulated value, but we also have an offset. This offset is called, well, MV bias. We will see that this MV bias can be used to ensure that the process value goes to set point in steady state. Remember steady state when T goes to infinity and that all transients have disappeared. We will see that in general, we will count on the integral action that will be introduced next to ensure that well, PV goes to set point in steady state. But if you're using a proportional action, a purely proportional action, well then to ensure that PV is equal to set point, you can use this 
offset MV bias. We will see later that this will work only for one set point. So depending on the MV bias that you have chosen, well, you will be able to ensure a zero steady state error, control error, for one set point only. As you can see, the controller gain relates the control error to the manipulated value. So the controller gain KC has units. Well, it's the units of MV divided by the units of the control error. But of course, the units of the control error are also the units of PV. So proportional only control is KC, that's the control again, times the set point minus PV, that's the control error, and we have this bias term MV bias, right? And the question is, why do we need this bias term for proportional only control? The idea here is that we can use this bias to make sure that the proportional controller will meet the set point at a given working point, right? And this working point will be MV1, PV1, right? And when we say working point, we always work at equilibrium or at steady state. If you know the gain of the process, right? Well, you know that in this working point, MV1 and PV1 are linked, right? In steady state, well, you know that PV1 is the gain of the process times MV1, and this is at equilibrium, right? So we want around this working point that if you set the set point to PV1, the actual PV will actually follow the set point. So we want to be able to follow the set point PV1. If we write the control equation, we have KC set point minus PV plus MV bias, right? In this case, well, the set point is PV1, right? So we'll have MV, KC, PV1 minus PV plus the bias term, right? And you can see that if you set the bias to MV1, you end up with this equation over here and you can see here that the operating point MV1 PV1 is an equilibrium point of this equation right so at equilibrium in steady state will go to the operating point MV1 PV1 and will have that indeed the set point is met well, let us suppose now that the bias is fixed and that we have set it to MV1. This means that you're able to follow a set point is equal to PV1, right? And this PV1 really is, if you know the gain of the static gain of the process, is KP MV1. And now the question is what happens if you well, set the set point to a PV2, right? That is different from PV1. What will happen, right? Well, around this new operating point, SP is equal to PV2, the proportional action, right, can be written as follows, right? We simply replace SP by the new value and the bias has been fixed. Right, And what you would like, of course, is that PV goes to PV2, but this will not be the case over here, because 
well, PV2 can only be reached by an MV2, right? And this MV2 is PV2 over the static gain of the process. And you can see that this point MV2 PV2 is not an equilibrium point of this equation. If you stick PV2 over here, right, you'll have MV1, right? So you can see that you can never go to this equilibrium point that is desired because you would like to follow this set point, right? So you can see that you will have in general a non-zero static error. You will not be able to follow the set point. So as a conclusion, using this bias, right, you can make sure that you follow the set point at one operating point, but it will only be at this operating point. If you go away from this operating point, well, the proportional action will no longer be able to ensure a zero static error. In conclusion, the bias can be used to ensure a zero steady state error around one unique set point and in general in a PI controller the integral action will take care of this bias automatically as we will see later in the course. Let us have a look at this using a MATLAB Simulink simulation and by the way these files these simulations are available on the web page dedicated to the course so we have here a process and as you can see it's a first order process with a lag time constant of five and a process gain of two and here we have a proportional only controller with this bias right for the moment the gain is 1.5 and the bias is 10 and if we look, this is indeed this proportional only controller. Well, let us run this example. And you can see that in steady state, well, you go to, although you've given a set point here of zero, you go to a PV of five, right? We can also have a look at the curve and this is what you see, right? You can see that the MV goes to 2.5 and the PV is 5, although you have set the set point to 0. So how can we explain this? Well, we have to look at the proportional only control, right? And here it is and well we have to look at the equilibrium point of this equation because we are going to evolve to this equilibrium point in steady state right so we have here that MV here we had a gain of 1.5 of the controller the set point is zero right in a steady state well pv is going to be kp the static gain times mv in our case the gain of the process is two so we'll have two mv so this is really here in steady state at equilibrium right and here we had this bias of 10 right so now we have an equation in mv we have mv is equal to minus 3 mv plus 10 and as you can see 4 mv is 10 so mv is equal to 2.5 right and we have a static gain of 2 here so pv will indeed evolve to 2.5 times the static gain and this is 5 in this case note that the idea is very simple if you want to follow a certain PV 
let us say 30, you said the 7.230, the buys that you have to take is, well, this 30 divided by the gain of the system. So here the buys has to be set to 30 over the gain, 30 over 2, right? And now if we run the system, as you will see, this one is going to 30, right? And if you change the gain to 2, for instance, this will not influence this working point. As you will see, I will again go to 30. Of course, if I change the gain of the process, right, then of course I will not go to the correct process value. To ensure that I go to the correct process value, I need now to take my set point and divide by the new gain, right? And this new gain is one. So if I run the simulation, you can see that I've chosen now the bias appropriately. Let us look at the closed loop response of a system, a process in feedback with a proportional only controller of the type that we have considered before. On the left here, the process that is controlled, that is under feedback with this proportional only controller, is a first order process, process gain 1, time constant 5, and it is a process without delay. On the right, you have exactly the same process, but now it has a delay of three seconds. The proportional action is with proportional gain Kc is equal to one, and the offset Mv bias is set to zero. Well, let us start first with the response of this first order system without delay. The set point is shown in brown. PV is shown in green and MV is shown in blue. And I will always use this same convention in this course. And you can see that, well, as soon as you do this set point change, that you indeed see this proportional kick, right? So the MV is reacting immediately to a set point change. From the responses of the set point PV and MV, there is quite a lot of information that you can obtain. Well, it's possible to see here in this first five seconds, since PV is on set point, we have an error that is zero and the associated MV is zero. So here we have zero, right? And we have zero over here. So the bias must be zero and this is indeed the case right you can also kind of see the controller gain and this controller gain can be seen here at the moment when the set point change occurs well this set point change will induce at that time an error of 30 right and you can see here that the variation of MV is 30 as well. So you can see then that the controller gain is one, right? And you can also obtain the gain of the process because in steady state, okay, and you have to take T large enough. Uh, let us take the value at 30 here. Well, you see that an MV of 15 corresponds to a PV of 15, right? And we are clearly here almost in steady state. So the relation between PV and MV is one. So indeed the gain of the process is one. Well, as expected, we can see that this proportional action is not capable of ensuring a zero steady state error right pv settles at 15 far away from the set point of 30 can we see why pv settles at 30 well we have to look at this equation here in 
steady state right in steady state this equation becomes mv is kc times the set point well pv in steady state is kp times mv right so minus kp mv plus mv bias right this is of course only true in steady state right so let us specify to our case kc is equal to 1 so we'll have the set point which is 30 minus kp is 1 mv plus 0 right so we'll have 2 mv is equal to 30 so we'll have mv is equal to 15 and this is indeed the case right and since we have a gain of 1 we'll have a steady state value of pv of 15 as well can we find the mv bias that is going to ensure that pv is going to go to set point well we have again to go to steady states right and write the controller equation right this is very important well we have mv well in steady state mv this is really the pv that you see divided by kp right is equal to kc sp minus pv plus mv bias but if you want to have pv on a set point this term is going to be disappearing right because you impose that the error is zero so you see here that the correct bias that you have to take is the pv or the set point here divided by kp right so if you want to follow this set point of 30 right the mv bias that you have to take in this case is 30 over 1 right 30 the set point and one here the process gain well let us now have a look at the closed loop response of this first order system with delay in closed loop with this proportional only action as you can see again well the proportional controller is not able to ensure a zero steady state error and you can see that the steady state response is exactly the same this is kind of logical because the steady state response only depends on the process gain the controller gain and the bias that has been used right here only the process dynamics have changed but the gain of the process has remained the same the reason why i'm showing this is that when you have a process with delay you'll have of course this proportional kick but since it will take a certain time for pv to react here three seconds will this proportional kick will be maintained for a period of time that is corresponding to the process delay so here three seconds so what have we learned by looking at these responses we have seen that proportional action gives an immediate reaction and immediate is very important here to changes here we have looked at changes coming from the set point but the changes can also come from pv in the form of a disturbance in general well there will be a non-zero steady state error if you use a pure proportional action but you can set this bias mv bias in such a way that you have a zero steady state error for one and one only given set point in practice we will not use a proportional only action and this bias right 
will be the output of an integrator that implements the integral action right so when we implement pure proportional action the output of this integrator from the integral action is fixed you have to beware of well noise if you have proportional action right because the noise will affect pv which will affect the error and since you have an output that is proportional to the error well you'll have the noise also on the controller output and this could lead to actuator wear when you change the proportional gain kc of the controller you have to do this in manual mode or you have to do this when the control error is zero indeed if you change the gain here when you're at t is equal to 30 and you're in automatic mode you can see here that you have an error of 15 well then if you change the controller gain from 1 to 2 well this will cause here a jump in mv from 15 to 30 so changing the controller gain in automatic mode when there is a control error causes a jump in mv in practice you will have to go to manual mode and if this manual mode is well implemented this will cause a reset of the bias to an appropriate value we will consider this for a pi controller later on in the course and remember that for a pi controller this bias comes from the output of the integrator let us now look at the adjustment of the proportional action so the adjustment of the controller gain we are looking here at closed loop step responses to the set point change given here in brown the closed loop is constructed from a first order system without delay in this case right and the process parameters are given over here and this first order system without delay is controlled using a proportional only controller right and we do this for three different values of the controller gain so you see here that kc is increasing you can observe two things the first one is that when the gain the control gain is increasing well the slope is increasing so the speed of response is improving right you can also observe that if the controller gain is increasing the static error static error is the difference between set point and pv at steady state well this static error is decreasing this can easily be seen by considering the steady state behavior in closed loop right so we are going to look at the behavior of the process in steady state and this is very simple pv is simply the static gain of the process kp times mv right and since we have a proportional action in steady state well we simply have the same relation so mv is kc gain of the controller times set point minus pv and we'll set the bias to zero to make things simple right if we inject the second relation into the first we obtain kp kc set point minus pv right and now we can isolate pv as a function of the set point and we have pv is kp kc 1 over kp kc set point and this relation is of course true only in steady state what you can see here is that when the controller 
gain is increasing you can see that this one will tend to one if kc is tending to infinity so indeed you can see that if you take a higher controller gain the static error is decreasing and if you go to the limit right you can see that the static error will become a zero okay this is for a first order without delay well if we now look at the same type of responses but for a first order system the same first order system but with a delay right a delay of three seconds then the story is completely different if we increase kc right you can see that the response becomes oscillating right when the gain increasing and if we would continue to increase the gain at some stage we would have an unstable closed loop well of course this does not come as a surprise because we have reviewed the gain and phase margins so you can kind of look what will be happening in our situation by looking at the loop gain right and this loop gain is the process times the controller right and in our case it's simply kp kc exponential of minus theta s over tp s plus one and here you have the body diagram of this loop gain what we can now do is look at the phase margin right well you can see that for kc is equal to one right the phase margin is 180 degrees huh? because the gain crossover frequency will be very far away on this side but when the gain is increasing you can kind of see that this gain crossover frequency is going to move this way and if you look then at the and so you, here you have the two gain crossover frequencies if you look at the corresponding phase margins you can see that they are decreasing if you continue to increase the gain what will happen is that you reach the critical gain and above that critical gain the closed loop system will be unstable of course a situation like this one without a delay is not going to happen in practice if only because of the sampling because of the sensor because of the actuator so a situation with delay is the one that you're going to encounter in practice in practice there will therefore be always a critical gain and above that critical gain the system will go to instability and in practice this means that you can increase the control again to have a better and improved speed of response but if you increase it too much well this rise time that will be small will be at the expense of a large settling time so adjusting the controller gain will be a compromise between a small rise time and a small settling time well let us summarize what we have just seen we can see that increasing the controller gain decreases the static error but in practice it will be the integral action that will be used to obtain a zero static error not the controller gain we'll come back to that later of course stability margin well increasing the controller gain kc decreases the stability margin and this might cause overshoot and oscillations and there is of course an upper limit to the gain that is allowable in practice this is this critical gain the speed of response well 
if you increase the gain kc we have seen that the speed of response increases and this is true for set point tracking and disturbance rejection right but we have seen that if you increase it too much this might be at the expense of the well settling time and this is then linked to the stability margin of course in practice the optimization of a purely proportional controller is very often the first step of the optimization of a PI or a PID controller. We'll come back to this when we talk about tuning PI and PID controllers. The speed of response is mostly determined by the proportional action this is very important and a common misconception is that the integral action should be used to deliver a fast response but this is a misconception right what you should do in practice is increase the gain until a fast response is obtained with an acceptable overshoot we'll come back to that later the purpose of proportional action is not to reduce the static error as we will use integral action to do this right and depending on the type of control problem remember there are two types of control problems disturbance rejection type control problems and set point tracking type control problems well one should accept more or less overshoot for the same process the controller should be made more aggressive for a disturbance rejection problem right so when you tune a controller for a disturbance rejection problem and you look at the set point response the closed loop set point response well you should tune it to have more overshoot and you can even accept an overshoot that goes up to 25 percent let us do a little quiz so a simply proportional control law with bias gain is given it's 0.5 the bias is zero is used to control a broiler system so this is a first order system with delay the gain is given it's one the time constant is five and well the delay is three and the closed loop response of this well simply proportional control law in feedback with this system is given over here right and as you can see well in the step response we clearly have a non-zero steady state error or a non-zero static error and the question is how would you choose the offset mv bias in order to have a zero static error in the case where the set point is 30 so how would you adapt mv bias to have here a pv that goes to set point in steady state so as usual look at the different alternatives and try to find the answer by yourself using the pause rewind and forward buttons well the first thing that you have to realize is that the curve the closed loop response that is shown here will not help you to answer this question all you need to look at is this equation of the pure proportional control law so if you want pv to be on set points at steady state well you know that this term over here kc sp minus pv will not contribute anymore because pv will be on set points so you can see that you have to choose as a bias mv bias dmv that is going to produce a pv of 30 right which mv is going to produce a pv of 30 well it's the mv that corresponds to the 
PV value that you want to reach in steady state 30 divided by the gain of the process in this case the gain of the process is 1 so the bias should be chosen as 30 and E is the correct alternative previously we have considered proportional control pure proportional control or proportional only control in this case here we consider pure integral control and it can be implemented as follows as you can see the output of the controller is the output of the controller at time t is equal to zero we assume here that the control action is activated at t is equal to zero and from there on we keep track of the integral of the control error remember that the control error is set point minus pv we have a tuning parameter this is the integral time constant and we'll call it ti in this control law the inverse of the integral time constant is used to multiply the integral of the control error we have seen why we use the inverse of ti when we have considered integrating processes right to simplify notations what we'll do is write simply that mv is proportional to the control error and that the proportionality factor is 1 over ti in the laplace domain this is how we'll write pure integral action what we'll do is again use this first order system without delay and with delay and look at the closed loop response with pure integral action we'll start again with the closed loop response of this first order system without delay and here we have again this set point change indicated in brown of 30 at time is equal to 5 this set point change occurs and we have here an error of 30 it's positive right and it's being integrated right so we use this equation and by the way here the integrating time constant is 10 seconds right so if we integrate something positive then mv will be increasing and you can actually compute the slope here when mv starts to react because we have an error of 30 we have here a constant in front 1 over ti with ti is equal to 10 so e over ti is 3 and we integrate this so this slope here is approximately 3 right so if you have a horizontal increase of 10 right we should have a vertical increase of 30 and this looks about right if we draw the tangent of course since mv is increasing right you can see that as a result pv will start to increase right and the error will be decreasing and you can see that indeed the slope here of mv is decreasing right until well you arrive at this time over here right the error is zero and you can see here that the slope is zero so you have an horizontal tangent right and well you can see here that at some stage well pv is going to the set point so with this purely integral action we are able to enforce here a zero steady state error right why is this well the only way that you can arrive at a steady state with a purely integral action is when e is equal to zero 
because e if it is different from zero it will lead to an increase or decrease of mv and therefore you're not in steady state of course you're going to go to set point under the condition of course that you reach a steady state what could happen is that you go to instability but this is clearly not the case over here well let us now look at the response of this first order with delay and we use the same purely integral action with this same ti is equal to 10 seconds so what happens here after this set point change is that you have an error of 30 right divided by 10 so we have this slope again of 3 but now because of the delay in the system of 3 seconds the error will remain constant for 3 seconds right so you will have this increase that is linear of mv with a slope of 3 until the system starts to react right from here on the system starts to react the error is becoming smaller and again here the slope of mv is decreasing until pv meets the set point and when it meets the set point well the slope is zero and we have this horizontal tangent by the way we have another one over here so it must be approximately here a second horizontal tangent and it is not shown over here but pv will also settle on set point because the only way to arrive at the steady state is when the error is zero and if the error is zero of course pv has reached the set point well we can now compare pure proportional action or proportional only action with pure integral action well if we look at the time of the set point change you can see here that pure integral action gives a gradual change of mv right whereas with a pure proportional action we had a sudden change of mv we had this really aggressive reaction right so here with mv with this purely integral action well we have a gradual change well there is another major difference with this pure integral action the zero steady state error is guaranteed and this was clearly not the case for pure proportional action pure integral action leads to a gradual and continuing action of mv until you have a zero steady state error this is of course under the assumption that there is a steady state that is stable well because of this 1 over ti integral of the error increasing the integral time constant decreases the integral action and note also that i have used here pure integral action to kind of make the difference with pure proportional action but integral action only is rarely used in practice of course you can combine proportional and integral action and then you obtain so-called proportional integral action this is how you implement it in continuous time right and if you go to the laplace domain you'll have mv is equal to kc you have the error here error here so we'll have one here for the proportional action and one over ti s for the integral action so if we put everything under the same denominator we obtain the following transfer function for the pi controller remember that the error is set point minus 
PV. And of course, this control law, this proportional integral action combines the advantages of proportional and integral action. For proportional action, we had an immediate action. This is this proportional kick and it is well suited to optimize the speed of response. Integral action leads to a gradual action, but that will continue until a zero steady state error is reached. And this is, of course, under the assumption that the closed loop is stable. But if you have integral action and the closed loop is stable, you will always have a zero steady state error. And this means that PV will go to set point. PI control is suited for a lot of applications, right? We will see when we introduce derivative action that if you have a process with a substantial second time constant, then it might be useful to introduce derivative action that we will introduce later in the course. As you can see, KC multiplies both the proportional and the integral action in most implementations. And it will be the case in the implementation that we'll use in this course, which will be the parallel implementation. So later on, KC will also multiply the action that will be added, which is the derivative action. Well, let us now have a look at this proportional integral action and we use this proportional integral action in closed loop on a first order system without delay and a first order system with delay. We take the two first order systems without and with delay that we have considered before, right? Here the PI action is with a gain of two thirds and with an integral time constant of three. The responses are illustrative. I do not pretend that this is an optimal tuning, right? These two closed loop responses are here to explain you how the proportional integral action is working. Well, let us have a look at the step response in closed loop of this first order system without delay with this proportional integral action, right? As before, you can kind of see some things from the closed loop response. The first thing that you can see is that we have here a set point change of 30. And we see that the proportional kick coming from the proportional action is only 20, right? So we can kind of see that we have here indeed this control gain of two thirds, right? The proportional kick is, well, the change that you see at the time of the set point change. So you see an error of 30 times the gain. So here indeed the gain must be two thirds. Well, as you can see, the system starts to react and two effects are noticeable. Well, the proportional action will decrease, right? Because the error is decreasing and this proportional action you can see here in dotted line yeah and of course when pv is on set point the error is zero so the effect of the proportional action becomes zero right as long as the error is positive right well the integral action will cause an increase of the integral part of mv right so you can kind of see here that you have this decrease of mvp and this increase of mvi right in the beginning well the increase of mvi is well, larger than the decrease of mvp but that at some stage here you arrive at this point over here where the tangent is horizontal. Well, this is the point in time where the decrease of the proportional part is perfectly compensated by the 
increase of integral action right you can see that at this point the integral action is still going to cause an increase of mvi and here since the error is decreasing well mvp is decreasing right and you can see that because we have integral action well pv is going to settle on a set point and this is obvious because the only way to have a steady state situation is when the error over here is zero right if it is not zero well this will cause an increase of mv and by definition then you're not in steady state this is making the assumption of course that we reach a steady state but if we reach a steady state it is always going to correspond to a situation where pv is equal to the set point well, let us now look at the closed loop response of this first order system with delay again with this same pi controller we have the same set point change right so at the time of the set point change you or well, the controller sees an error of 30 and because of this gain this controller gain of two thirds we see here a proportional kick a p kick of 20 right then well we have a difference with respect to the previous response we have a delay here of three seconds so for a period of three seconds the process is not reacting which means that the error is constant and we integrate something constant and we see this proportional kick and then this integral ramping and of course when the process starts to react then of course the response becomes different right but in this period of time of three seconds that corresponds to the delay of the system the controller sees an error of 30 right it is multiplied by the gain of the controller two-thirds right and by one over ti and ti is three seconds so what is being integrated is 20 thirds right the slope over here is 20 thirds and indeed over the period of time that corresponds to the delay three seconds mv is going to increase by another 20 percent right so from there on the process starts to react so here you can see and this is again this dotted line this corresponds to mvp right you can see that mvp is decreasing but the error is positive so mvi is increasing and here in this period of time well the increase of mvi is larger than the decrease of mvp until we arrive at this point over here right and this is the point where the increase of mvi is exactly compensated by the decrease of mvp from here on right well mvi is still increasing but the decrease of the proportional part is sharper so this is why mv is decreasing right so what you observe here is this interplay between proportional and integral action you can continue to do this and here you can observe other times where well, proportional action is exactly compensated by integral action but again what is important is that we see that well we have a zero steady state error and this is guaranteed because we have integral action over here 
Well, there are a number of things that you can observe from these two closed loop responses. The first one is this interplay between proportional action and integral action. The MV that you see here is always, well, the sum of two things, right? The proportional part and the integral part, and they interplay with one another. But what you should see is that, of course, gradually, here this is well, done quite smoothly here this is done with a bit of oscillation but gradually the proportional action disappears and is taken over by the integral action in steady state you will have a proportional action that has disappeared and that has been entirely taken over by the integral action Tuning a PI controller is finding an equilibrium in the interplay during the transient. And clearly, it becomes more difficult when the process delay increases with respect to the time constant. Indeed, for a process with delay, when the process finally reacts after the time delay right you can see that the output of the controller is the sum of this proportional kick and this integral ramping right for processes with a small delay this proportional kick can take high values typically higher values than the steady state mv this is the steady state mv you could have proportional kicks that are higher right but as the delay increases this proportional kick will have to reduce because you have to take into account the integral ramping that is following right you can see that this equilibrium is difficult to find and this is something that you will learn to master with experience well there's another thing that you can learn over here you see here the closed loop response of a first order system where the delay is increasing and you see the closed loop responses with the same pi controller so you can kind of see here the effect of an increasing delay and as we have seen previously well this increasing delay will lead to a decrease in the robustness margins stability margins so face margin and gain margin and of course this will lead to oscillations in the system as you can see what we'll do now is look at an interpretation of proportional integral action so we can decompose mv in the proportional part and the integral part and the integral part can be written as follows this is something we have done before if you take the derivative this is what you'll obtain right so what you can do is take ti to the other side okay so we'll have this one is equal to kc times the error but you can see that kc times the error well it's mv the output of the controller minus the integral part so we arrive here at this equation if you take this one and this one and you take mvi to the other side well you obtain here that the integral part can be seen as the output of the controller going through a first order dynamics with time constant ti well we can illustrate things in the form of a block diagram we had seen that mv is equal to kc times the error plus mvi right and we had seen that well mvi could be computed by the following differential equation right and this is the differential equation that implements a first order system so the output of the 
integral part over here can be seen as MV going through a first order system with time constant ti right so this pi controller that we've seen before you can also represent it as follows here you have the proportional part and here you have the integral part remember that if we had considered this well proportional only controller we had obtained kc times the error plus mv bias right kc times the error we have got it over here it's still the same and well in this proportional only controller the bias was constant and one interpretation of the pi controller is that you can see here that you have a bias that is added but that it is computed automatically right so a pi controller can be seen as a proportional controller where the bias is computed automatically in order to make sure that well pv is going to go to set point in such a fashion that you have a zero steady state error remember that with the proportional only controller we had that the zero steady state error was achievable but only for a one set point because of this mechanism this is going to be true for all set points well the neat thing about this implementation is that you can include limitations that come into the form of a saturation this is this block over here or in the form of a rate limitation so a limitation on the slope of mv and as you can see over here well you can include these limitations without running the risk of integral windup because it is the limited mv that goes through the first order system so as you can see here we have this automatic anti windup mechanism we'll come back to that later in the course when we talk about windup well it's time again for a little quiz so what you see here is the response of a broida system so it's a first order system with time constant 10 seconds delay 10 seconds and the gain of the process has to be determined and it is the closed loop system with a pi controller and here it is so it's the standard pi controller and the question is can you identify the process gain the integral time constants and the gain of the system so i will show the question and as usual use the pause rewind and forward buttons to find the solution and try to do this by yourself first so these are the statements and here you see the response again okay so it's time for pause well it's quite easy to obtain the gain of the process you wait until well mv and pv have settled out this is the case over here and you can see that an mv of 60 corresponds to a pv of 30 so the gain is 0.5 right and you can clearly see here that the controller gain is one because an error at the time of the set point change of 30 results in a variation a proportional kick of 30 over here so we have a well gain of the system that is 0.5 and a gain of the controller that is one so this leaves us alternative b or alternative c right so we have now to look at the well integral time constant and you can see here that the proportional kick is 30 right and you have a delay of 10 seconds and in this delay of 10 seconds well the integral action has added well something that is equivalent to the proportional kick right the integral 
action will integrate the constant error 30 divided by ti over a period of 10 seconds so this will yield 30 times ti over 10 and as we can see after the period of the delay this is equal to 30. this means that well ti is equal to the delay is equal to 10 seconds a ti of 100 would cause something that would have a much smaller increase so the correct answer is c